Welcome to Jennifer Batten's That'll be me. Welcome to my tutorial for Transcribe. Here's the table of contents that you can pause and have a look at. I have the timing of all the sections here so you can jump from one to the next if there's only certain things that you're interested in or if you come back later and want to review something that you learned. I'm starting this tutorial by showing you why it's important to keep your files organized. I opened up a Transcribe file but it had to go looking for the audio because I didn't have them together and I moved them from where they originally were. So it's a really good idea to take your audio, always have it in the same folder as your transcribe files. Now I'm going to drag the audio into transcribe. Once it's there, you can see the full waveform. There are different ways to see the waveform. If I want to see the entire song in the window, I can do Command G. Boom, you get the whole thing. Anywhere that I click, this red arrow is going to appear. And if I hit the space bar, it starts playing from the red arrow. So now I want to make a loop. For instance, I'm going to go in this general area. If I want to open it up just a little bit and zoom in, I can do Command right arrow. And you see the arrows disappeared, but if I hit the space bar, it'll start right there. So I'm going to open up a little more and adjust the arrow a little bit and listen for a couple bars. So the general area that I'm going to loop is there. If I want to see the entire loop in the window and not the whole song, I do Command F. Now you can see on the left that the beginning of the loop is a long way from where the actual downbeat is. There's a couple of different ways that I can adjust that. One of the ways I can do that is just to click and drag. You see this arrow? You can move it wherever you want. So I'm going to stop about there. If I wanted to adjust it just a little bit, I can also just use the right or left arrow. Now I'm going to scroll in just a little bit to see the end. Then I can see I'm a little bit off on where the loop is. So there's a couple different ways. I can either zoom in like I just did for the beginning, or I can just listen and see how the loop ends. It actually sounds pretty good. A different way to navigate also is that you can grab this blue dot, which becomes bigger or smaller depending on how big your zoom is. So I'm going to zoom out again and just move the point. I want it to be right where that first line is of the hit. So instead of dragging this time, I'm going to do shift arrow and it's right on it. So the loop is sounding pretty good. Now, a lot of times when I'm practicing and if there's something I really want to work on or if there's a bunch of chunks I want to work on, which if I'm getting a new gig together, I always have multiple chunks, I'll export the file. And when you export, there's a window that comes up. The first thing you see, how many repetitions? Usually if it's a very short chunk like that, I'll just put a two in front of it. So it's going to loop 21 times in my exported file. You also have the option of exporting the whole file or the current selection. If you make any changes, which we'll get into later, they're going to light up here and you have the chance to bypass it before you export. You get a couple different formats to export in, WAVE or AIF, Windows or Apple, and different sample rates as well. So I'm going to just export that 21 times. You can hit Browse to navigate to tell it where you want these chunks to be saved. There's a whole lot this application does besides slow down but slowing down is something that makes transcribing a lot easier. I made another loop and I'm not worried about making this a solid four beats, four bars, two bars, whatever. It's just a series of notes that I want to grab. You can see at the top there are preset speeds I can slow down with.
Not only are there presets, but if you want to get in between, for instance, 35% and 50%, you go down to the bottom. You see the icons of the standing man and running man. You can go in between the presets, 35, 50, or you can just use this without dealing with the presets at all and just see what works for you that is slow enough for you to hear. Here's another amazing function that Transcribe will do. You can toss in videos and slow them down. Here I've set up a vocal loop. What you need? You know I got it. So I'm going to get into karaoke mode now. If you click on effects right up here at the top, it's going to open up a whole new window. There's only two windows in this program, and this one is where you can get into details. So karaoke comes in really valuable in a lot of different situations. First, you need to activate it. Karaoke takes the center track out of phase. So now listen to it. Now you still hear the vocal, but really what you're hearing is the reverb return because the center track is removed. And that'll work whether it's a lead instrument, lead guitar, saxophone, or vocal. And so this can give you a whole practice track minus one to play along with. So all mixes are mixed differently, so you're gonna get different effects. Sometimes the vocal's just completely gone. Sometimes you'll hear a lot of effect on the sides and you can start changing pitches to see what the most comfortable vocal key is for you. You can take it up um, up to an octave, down an octave. It sounds a little squirrely, but the backing track is great to work with. Without going into the second window, you can go back and forth between bypass what you need? and karaoke mode. So that's a really handy thing. You can take it further, especially if you're trying to learn the chords or the comping underneath. You can get into EQ. You can take any frequency and boost or reduce it. You can clear it instantly. And the one that I use most often is bass remove. You click that in, click load it, and boom, all these frequencies are bottomed out. So the bass is completely out of the way. You can get into fine details about tuning in this panel. For instance, if you have a bass that you're really trying to hear and it's really low, especially if it's a, a five or six string bass, you can get the bass to the forefront and boost it up an octave or even two octaves. Semitones is the same as it is on the front, half steps one way or another. And sense is really fine detailed tuning. And a lot of times with old analog tracks, the tape is actually stretched so it can be sharp or flat of A440. So you can play the track and play along with it and just move this slider just a little bit until it feels like it's really in tune. In fact, there's some tunes like Michael Jackson music, some of the stuff in Thriller and Bad was pitched up and sped up just to make it a little more exciting at the mix. But when you try to play along with that, it'll drive you crazy. So you could take the entire tune pitch it up a few cents and export it so you always have it in the correct tuning. Speed is something I love using if I have a lot of stuff to learn, especially if it's slower stuff, ballads, and you have enough repetitions that you kind of have it memorized but not quite, and you really don't want to go through a whole seven minute song just to get more repetitions. So generally what I do, I generally don't go beyond 125 because that's really a lot faster than the original, but you can pump it up anywhere between, you know, 110, 125, and run through the whole set like that just so you get more repetitions in quicker. From the front panel, if you want to bypass the EQ, you just do that, it becomes light, then you know it's not engaged. If you have changed the pitch and you want to check the original, you can bypass that or activate it. And here's the karaoke mode icon. You can pull that in and out. Here's how to add markers. For a section, I'm going to do Shift S, and then for each measure into the section, I'm going to do Shift M. That will immediately give you a marker.
If my mark was a little bit off, I can just click and drag and move it to where it should be. I can also do beat markers by doing Shift B. If I want to change the name of the marker, I can control click, then I get this menu. I can edit it and change the name to verse or whatever you want it to be. If I want to make each one of these sections a loop to work on, I can make the loop and then go back to the effects panel, hit the miscellaneous, and then just shift click and it will remember. So I'm going to go back here and do another one. Shift click. And then I can just jump back and forth between these, which is really useful if you shut the program down and you want to come back and work on certain sections. Now I'm going to show you an uber cool function that is one of the reasons that Transcribe is one of the best coaches you can find on the planet. I have a little loop here. Just a quick thing. If I hit play and speed up, it's going to come up with a window. For this demo, I'm going to choose to just move it right along. I'm going to start out at 50% speed, have the loop repeat only once, and change it by 10% each time it loops around, ending up at 100%. So obviously, if you have a, a much more difficult line, you want to start much slower and have it maybe repeat 10 or 20 times before it increases. And you certainly don't have to choose 10% jumps each time. You can do two or three if you want. So that's 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%. And automatically jumps back to 100%. This section is on shortcuts. Some of them I've already gone through, some are new. So if I hit the space bar, it starts and stops. And every time I hit it again, it's always going to go back to the red mark. If I want this red arrow to jump to where I paused, then I hit E. Boom, it's done. If I want to keep the red arrow where it's at, but I want to continue playing the audio from where I paused, then I can use comma. Command and G will fit the whole song to the screen. And if I make a loop, and I want to fit that to the screen, Command F, think of F as full. If I want to adjust the loop on the left side, I just use arrows, right and left. If I want to adjust the loop on the right side, I'll add the shift key to the arrow. If I've set up a loop and I want it to go away temporarily, I'm going to hit L. If I want to keep going over a couple of notes and I don't want to constantly be hitting the space bar, <laughs> I can use Z. So it's just one command instead of start and stop. It's just Z takes you there and plays. However fast you want to do it. If I want to jump between markers, I can use shift and bracket. Here it's jumping between the beat markers and now the measure markers. Now before I had showed you how to make section markers and measure markers and beat markers, here's an alternate thing. If I hit M without the shift while I'm paused, then I get an option to make a mark at the current point or where the vertical line is paused. Another useful shortcut, instead of grabbing this blue bar to go left or right, you can use the up-down arrows. Up is going to take you to the left and down will take you to the right. There are a lot of different view options on the main window. If you come down here below the middle bar, you can drag all the way to the bottom so all you see is the waveform, or you can go the opposite direction so all you see is the piano keys. I'm going to do half and half for now. Then I'll go to the view menu, 
and I'm going to choose Show Spectrum. Then I can go back to the View menu and choose Show Note Guesses. Now if I'm having trouble with a chord and I want to get some help, choose Show Chord Guesses. Then this window will pop up over here. The chord that it guessed is a C-sharp without the third over G-sharp. So essentially a power chord with the fifth in the bass. Because it's really difficult for software to pick out the chords when there's all kinds of other stuff going on, for instance here, it can't always figure it out. It's going to be a lot easier if the chord is out on its own or if you go into karaoke mode and remove the center track. So you see you get this message over here, spectrum too messy or out of tune. There are other messages. No matches, that's a single line, it's not a chord right there. A few more things you'll find in the view menu. It's very helpful having a timeline right here. And you can also show DB lines. You also see the current time in this window as well as the total time of the song. If you want to find information about your sound file, go to Window and choose Sound File Info. It also has a Compute Tempo function, but you need to put in markers first. So I'm going to take that section, open it up, and say compute. It's under the markers menu. The average tempo over the 16 markers is 135.7. Shabam! So that's a wrap, smarty pants.